Okay, good evening, good afternoon, and good morning, everyone from wherever you are joining us this evening um, for another awesome session of the Data Analysis for Educators. It's been an awesome six week. Uh, we started from the week one to the week two to week three, week four, week five, and it's week six of an intensive learning. If you are excited to be in the class today, let me see your reactions in the chat. Let me see, put your names in the chat. Let's see where you are joining us from this evening. Uh, good afternoon, good evening, and good morning, everyone. It's nice to be back in class. If it's also, if you are also feeling excited like I am right now, uh, let me see your favorite emojis in the chat. Welcome, Odaro Patience. Welcome, wife. Welcome, Adeyemi from Lagos. Abdurrahim is glad to be back in class. Welcome, Rakia. Welcome, uh, UTB. Welcome, Omotayo from Abba. Good evening, Endurance. Welcome, Abdulwasiu. Good evening, Mr. Muiwa. It's nice having you again. And I'm very sure everybody's also glad to be here this afternoon to learn one or two things again. It's going, it's the wrap. Uh, we are going to be handing the long six week data analysis uh, master class today. Yes, and uh, we are going to be wrapping this particular quote up by building a dashboard. We are going to be building an interesting dashboard, and I can, um, I, I, I can promise you that you are going to, uh, be glad to be in this part. You are going to, at the end of the class. I will ask you again how you felt about the class. Yes. I promise you that I'm going to ask again so that I, I, I can get your reaction so that you can also confirm with me that this is actually the class that you are supposed to be at this time. Thank you so much, everyone. Good evening, Mrs. Esri. Good evening, Abubakar. Good evening, Chidima. It's nice every, having everyone around. And um, I'm excited to inform you that we have Mr. Mwewa on the call already, who is going to be taking us through how to build a dashboard right. using Excel. Yes, it's going to be taking us through as usual. Welcome. Tejimola from Lagos. Welcome, Clement. It's nice to see everybody again. Um, I know last week was a bit um difficult. We could not have our live session due to um what was happening in the in, in the country, but we are very glad to have everyone back in the class. Um, ladies and gentlemen, my fellow educators, let's welcome Mr. Muiwa in the chat room. Let's welcome Mr. Muiwa in the chat room with our favorite emoji. Uh, I can't wait to get on this class. Let's welcome Mr. Muiwa in the chat room with our favorite emoji. Good afternoon. Good evening, Mr. Muiwa. Uh, please yeah. confirm you can hear me loud and clear. Yeah, and you are ready for you, us. Good evening, sir. Thank you so much, Mr. Muiwa. I, I will be passing the microphone to you now. Thank you so much for joining us again. Over to you, Mr. Muiwa. All right. All right. Good evening, everyone. How has been our day? Yes. Welcome to class. This is our last class for today. We are going to be building a dashboard, a dashboard that you can use in monitoring what's going on in the class. I'm going to introduce you to it and how it's going to go, then how we can print our report sheets, or yes, report sheets in this case, on our letter heading for the students to take home. Also, I will be answering some questions. Someone asked the other time, how ah, we can lock a cell? Then how ah, it is possible for two or more staff to work on the same workbook at the same time? Yes, it's very possible through the use of, uh, by using Microsoft 365, then each different people will have different level of access. You can have access to work on a particular sheet or not to work on another sheet. Okay, great. So today I'm going to show you what you'll be doing for the final project that we earn you the certificates of completion. And for this, if you join us from the first, second, third, fourth, or fifth week, or you are joining today, you have to once you submit the final um, final project, which is the dashboard, then you are entitled to the certificates. All right, so right now I'll be sharing my screen. Today, we are going to be using the Microsoft Office online. All right, so I will be sharing my screen right now. Okay, please kindly confirm that you can see my screen. 
Yes, yo os conheço, amigo, está muy bien. All right. Okay. Now, fine. This is the, if we can remember, this is the same bad data sheets that we used about three weeks ago. This bad data is for session 2024-2025, third term, and class is grade 10. All right. Tabular formats. I told you that for every table, the ID is very important. This is like a primary key. So this is not SQL. Okay. This is like an ID, which is unique to a particular student, a particular data instance. All these, they are instances, data instances. Every row has an ID, which is very, very important for identification. All right. This is the bar data. This is the brush sheet. Also, of course, this is what we at the other time. And each row represents a student. You can add borders on this if you wish. This is a row. This is another row, which each student also have an ID. And the ID is matching the ID. Yeah. Yes. Great. Notice something up here. This row five. This is a row representing the course code, like subject code, 9708-9709. If you've done Cambridge, you see that it's looking like Cambridge A-level code. All right. I didn't include um, code for this and this, which you are going to put there by yourself. But the, the criteria is that it must be unique. No subject should have the same code, the same subject code. And I'm going to tell you the reason in a while. All right, this is the report. Now, this is what we are going to be building. Something like this. Yes. Okay. Now, this is what we are going to be building. Now, before I continue, this is Microsoft Office. This I make the picture blur because we are, we are streaming it online. So you can add any picture that you like. All right. Now, this is our report card. This is the report card, this one, yeah, this area, this is the report card. And this is the class teacher's comment. This is the psychomoto, whatever, whatever. And this, are, you can add many other, you can add many other features if you wish um, as part of your, requ your requirements in your school. All right, but let me start this way. You notice that this is the ID column. There's, a, there's something here. This is the student ID. If I click on, there's a small arrow here for data validation lists, whereby the list here, the list here you are seeing here is the list of, the list of students here. Yeah, this one, this side, this student ID here. Sorry. Okay. Uh, so you notice that if I click on this column, and select this. Please, let's focus on the on the name under this picture. This name, Emma Parker. I want to change the student ID here. Yes. You, you see that when I change it, the name changed. Yes, exactly. So that's where we are going. Okay. So I designed this. Normally, we know how to design sheets. It's just normal Excel worksheets have I just eat the grid lines. All right, view, 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 edits, grid lines. Okay, don't mind, this is Microsoft Office Online. That is why it is different. You can see the grid lines, the normal grid lines. So I decided to hide it up here, grid lines. So it's no longer there, that's what happened. But let me include it for teaching purposes. Now. This is the picture of the students. This is the age. This is the height. This is the position head, maybe head girl or nil or whatever. Okay, we can always change it. Now, what we be doing? This is the score. This is the reports. I don't know if I can print from this Microsoft Online. Let me try to print and see what will happen. Yes. Show a printer friendly view. Okay. Let me see if there's anything. 
showing yes exactly we can see that our print view if we can all see this now this is a for paper you can see that our print view is is because we are online actually normally this column this one that is left here okay okay yes it's even good i'm not i'm not i, I don't intend printing this status past past or not past but we can see that our print view is only printing the report section of our dashboard. That means that when you want to print your report, this is like printers from NECO. This is welcome, the name of the students, grade five, average, then teachers, comments, principal comment, then the cycle photo and all others and whatever you want to include. Now, do you notice that the name of the school is not here and the term and the session. Yes, because on our school letter heading, we already have the name and we already have the heading like report for second term 2024-2025 academic section under D is as part of the letter heading. So we can just print this section on our school letter heading and that's it. Then after printing it, the principal will stamp it and we issue it to the students in the seed envelope. Okay, let me go back to workbook. Now, I'm going to explain how it is possible for the print view to be able to pick only this part. You can see that there is a, like this part is being carved out. When I try to print, I'm not printing this chart. I'm not printing this chart. I'm not printing the picture or this name. I'm only printing this session, this one. Yes, this part down. You can see that there is a faint line here. Okay. First thing. Okay, got it. Thank you. Okay. Let me first. Let me explain what I did. Now, I want to tell the program that whenever I try to print, only print this section. Um, the section I want to highlight right now. Only print the session I want to highlight right now. Now, this is what I'm going to do. You are going to select the session. Start from here. Sorry. It's because we are online. Let me use my arrow key and shift. Select the session. Start from here and go down. I am highlighting the session I want to print, including the charts. Yes, I'm stopping here. Yes, see it. I'm stopping there. That is my report sheet, the report part of it that I want to give to the students. Then what I did is this print layout, then print area. Now, since I already select the part I want to print, print set, just click on set print area. Okay, and that's it. Let me do it again. This is print area. Clear print area. I already cleared the print area. Let me try to print. You are going to see what is going to happen here. Okay. Let me try to print. Now, show a printer friendly view. We are going to see that it's going to try to print everything. Do you see? Yes, this is not looking nice. Like, this is not looking nice. No, we, are not, we don't like it this way. It, it is broken now. Our intention is broken now. So, I highlight the part I want to print. I like everything. Shift plus arrow key because I'm online. Then shift down. Yes, I added an extra space. Then page layout, print area, set print area. And that's it. You can see this line. You can see this lower line, this line here, like a border. You can see this line up here, like a card. If you are used to CSS or bootstrap, you can see like a card. Okay, now file. Print, show a printer friendly view. Yes, and that's it. You see that we have it. Okay, at this point, is there any question? Yes, my network is working well. Okay, it's nice. It's your network. All right. Um, there's no question in the chat. Can we continue? Please respond in the chat. All right. 
Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Samuels. Thank you, Mr. Chidima. All right. Okay. All right. So that is that about the print area. Let me quickly, let me explain what cell locking is. Now, assuming I want, I don't want to, I don't want anyone else to edit this cell, this cell here, Lagos. What I do is that this is the sheet. Right click on it, on the sheet name. Then, okay, I'm online. Is that possible? Okay. Um, yes. Yes, manage protection. But on desktop, it should be protect sheets. So this is manage protection. Yes. So I click on it. Then it is asking me what I want to protect. But this is the online version. Yes, protect sheets. Then I click on yes. Yes, once I click on protect sheets, you can see sheets protection password. Then I type one, two, three. Again, one, two, three. Then I'm able to protect this sheet sheets now. Save. Yes, one, two, three, one, two, three. Then I click on save. Yes, all right. So that's that. Then I closed it, this one. I closed it temporarily. Then this is my Lagos. Then right click on it again. Then um, there's nothing, something like format cell. This guy is blocking it. I don't know. Okay. Insert page layout, format cell, draw. Okay. Insert, all right. Copy, show changes. Delete filter format cell. No, I only want. Okay, the format cell feature is not available. All right, but what you are going to do is that you are going to. Okay, I'm coming. Okay, all right. Manage protection. Yes, for me, you see that I was unable to. One, two, three. Then, never. Then, yes, the other time I tried to edit it, nothing was typing here. You can see that I'm able to type right now because it is at have unprotected the cell. But this is the online version. That's why it is misbehaving. If you use the desktop version, you are going to go to sheets here. Yeah. Here, yeah, you are going to see protect these sheets. After clicking on it, you are going to set a password. Then here, yeah, you go to, you pick, you select the cell you want to protect. Then after selecting it, you click on format cell. Then you'll be able to see protect this cell, which the feature is not available here, but there's no problem about that. All right. Now, how did I build this dash build this dash dashboard? Firstly, what I did was I have an empty dashboard. Let us try if we can start from scratch. Okay. Let us see if we can start from scratch. Okay. The first thing was that I create a column for the picture. Mm -hmm. After creating a column for the picture, I match the columns together. This is, I think this is match. Yes, I match everything as one. That is the space for the picture. Since I'm online, I won't be able to insert the picture right now. Then next is that I have the name under like John Doe. I may not be building everything, but I want to show you the key detail. J O H N D O E. That's the name column. Let me put name temporarily. Of course, I matched these two cells also. Great. Okay. I have something around this portion. Student ID. Yes. And I have the ID there. Okay. Now, what happened here actually is that on that, I, I want the student ID to be a list like this, like this, yes. Now, what I 
have to do is to go to the data that I want to have in this cell should not be something I typed from my head. It should be something that I can choose from a list of values from this column. So going to this part, data, the data will be on another, on this side, on the right side of your screen, if you are using desktop. Data, so we have sort ascending, sort descending, custom filter, and then data validation. Then I don't want any value. I want a list, list, yes. And th that list should come from, you can see source here. Then you go to this, that is, you are going to point your mouse to this small table here that you want to pick a source. Then after clicking on it, it is going to ask you to choose a source. Then I think you click on your bar data and you select that source this way. Yes. You select it down and does it and you are done. And you click on OK. And you can see that we have this list. Yes. Because that is a table. You'll be using desktop in your own case. We have this list. Yes, that's how I got that. We have this list, right? Okay. Now, based on this ID, I want the name. The person, the name of the student bearing this name that is having this name. Now, so of course, what we are going to do is what our VLOOKUP. Yes, like a like a query in SQL. V look o o k u p v look up now this is our function v look up okay no problem okay uh, yes i understand what i'm doing why are you blocking me okay v look up i'm looking up this student id yes comma now i want to look up the data from this table from this table Okay, yes, from this table down, the arrow keys are working, but shift and arrow, yes, to the side. I want to capture the old table. You may not capture the old table in your case, but I love to capture the old table. Yes, I have captured the old table. You can see about data, ash all, but I'm capturing everything, comma. After capturing everything, then I want the name column. Yes, let's go back to bio data. I want the full name column. And the full name column is column from, from the ID counting from one, one, two, three, four, five. The full name column is column five. Yes. Then I want an exact match. That means zero for exact match. You should remember how the VLOOKUP works. Then I click on OK. Yes, you can see that we have the name of the person that are this ID. If I change this, to the first one, you can see that the name changes or the name changed. Yes, 192167. I have this. Let us check for confirmation. 192167. Where is it? Yes, this is it. You can see on this row 31. Yes, this is it. All right. Great. Okay. Again, I also have. Yes, I can do the same thing for grade, for gender, but wait. Can you allow me to copy this so that because of time, if possible, is it possible for me to copy it? Yes. And can you allow me to paste it below here? Yes, it's worked. All right. This is our class. Grade five is not changing. So we are not querying anything. We can always inside the section. Then the gender also. I can also use the same formula. Okay, if I can copy everything I have in this formula bar, copy. And I know that the gender or the sex is column one, two, three, four, five, six. That is column six. Then I can also do the same. Paste in the paste the formula I copied into the formula bar. Yes, is it possible for me to copy it? All right. Let me see. Okay, like, oh, sorry. Okay, 
I copy that with Control C. Then I try to paste it in here. Yes. Then I'm targeting column six. Yes. You see that the person is male. If I change the student ID to, eh, it's also male. It's also male. Let's see. Why do I have only male in my class? Okay. What's going on? Let us check the power data. Okay. Let, this is 192203. Okay. So let us try 192203. I can even I can also type it manually. 192203. Yes, we can see that this is female. Yes, it is changing. So it's also worked. Citizenship, Nigeria, um, birthday. We can also do the same to query the birthday. That's how it goes. Okay. Now I am going to copy. That's that. We can also, we can always fill all this. Now you will allow me to copy this also because of time, which I know you can design that using colors, border. You can do that. Now, after copying that, I paste in that here. Now we can query the phone number, mobile number. Also from the bar data. I know that the phone number is column, what's that? The phone number is column, sex, date of birth, address, zip code, state, country. Okay, I know that the phone number is column from the beginning. That is, let me check. From the beginning, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Column 13 from the beginning. All right, so... Using the same VLOOKUP function, which I'm querying, using to query the same table, just copy, paste in the same VLOOKUP. Okay, I've copied something else before that, before now. Okay, let me copy this. Control A, copy. And I want to query column 13, if you remember. Column 13. Now, I will change this five to 13. Yes. And the and I can see that it is broken. Yes, why is it broken? Let us say VLOKUP E4 bar data all column 13 and enter. And why is it broken? There is already data here. Do you want to? Yes. Okay. Is that why it is broken? There's something wrong. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Depending all rights, I think I can get the reason why it is broken. Actually, we are having the online version, but that's the, the that is the the formula actually. Okay. It is seeing it as a link already instead of normal text. So I think the way we can do this is I don't know why this guy is. If I can all right, format cell. What I want, yeah, I do want, I want, no, yes, text. No, I want general. And in that case, hopefully it should work. Yes, if it's general now. So hopefully it should work right now. Or I don't know. No, this formula in the cell contains an error. All right. Okay. If you look up this, this is someone at example.com. No. Remove. Okay. Hopefully it should work now. Yes, it's still containing an error and it's in the general form. Yes. Okay, no problem. The issue about that is because I'm using the online version of Microsoft 
Excel. Okay. Now, let me try the address, which I'm very sure should work. Let's go to the bar data. And I know that the address is this. This should be column from the beginning. That is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That is column seven. Okay. Now, I'm going to copy in the same VLOOKUP function, control V, control V, and why this? Okay. Control V, address now. I'm going to clear everything and paste in my VLOOKUP function. I think that is column seven, right? Yes, column seven. Yes, it's still giving me the same error. Do okay. If you use the the way we did it here, if you use the um uh, the desktop version, it's going to work. You see that it's returning the name. Yes, it's returning the name here. So if I change this to seven, it's going to return the address. You see, this is the zip code. Column seven should be the zip code. Or what's that? This is column one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, date of birth, eight. Okay, it's column eight. Okay. Column eight should be the zip code. This is the one we created before. So column eight, I want to show you how it's going to work here. So you see that it is showing the address, then I expand it. So that it's going to show very well. You see that at the U streets, then city, Ikeja, Lagos. All right, so there is an error here. Um, so it's been seen as a a link like mobile number if i try to add a link d d s n dot a i i'm going sure it's going to it's going to stay yes it's expecting a url there that is a particular formatting but in your own case it's not going to be like that but well, that's how you are going to query it but whatever once the VLOOKUP is changing with respect to this ID. Always query your, you see that your VLOOKUP, all the lookup function that I've been using, I've never changed the, this E5, this column E5, this one here, this E5, do you see it? This E5, that I'm, so it is the E5 column. Now, whatever it's in this E5 for student ID, pick it and use it to populate whatever you have here. That's that. So you can also format this the way I did it. Like that's the way I have it here. So since I have explained that one, I can also copy everything here and paste it in. Yeah. Yes. Which is it going to work? Yes, I can also copy everything and paste it in here, making sure that this is starting from E3, okay. Okay, yes, then it's going to work. Then if I change this, hopefully something should change. Yes, it's working like that. This is the column for picture. You can add your own picture the way you like it. Okay, let's go to the, the reports. You know how to construct this chart. This is just a chart that is showing. This chart is based on this, um, Great on this score, this total. So we want to see if the students pass. You see that biology up there. You can easily you can easily see the highest mark hundred. That is where that is agri. The students knows agri very well, and this I included this two zero zero because of this extra two lines here. So what I did here, you know how to create a table, and you know how to do. You type this welcome, John. What I did is I can cut I. Use welcome, concat B11, whatever you have here, this B11 of B13, which is B13 is the grade. Welcome name of class. 
Yeah, like that. So you can format it the way you like it. And you know how to calculate percentages. I type this, then the percentage is just total multiplied by the total number of subjects recorded, which is total, sorry, total everything, sum everything together by whatever you have here in I31, which is total number of subjects recorded. Yes, so you have this in percentage, 77.25. Then you use your normal, that's, that's um, grading system, if statements to compute this distinction, good, excellent, then this is another condition. If the person scores above 40, look at the formula bar. If it's greater than 40, passed, else not passed. We don't want to put failed since we don't we don't want fail, failed to be in most of our reports. So passed or not passed. So because there is no score here, this is not passed, not passed. And there is a do not chat to show the teacher that, okay, this person passed uh, many subjects, then you can also format it using the style as you want. And this one indicates not passed. You can see that, yes, because we have the online version now, when you go over, over it, you see count two, 20% of the total, she did not pass, but she passed at what? She passed 80% of her subjects. And she 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 did not pass twenty percent of her subjects. Okay, now I'm going to copy that also. I'm going to copy this report sheet. Great. Yes, and I I'm going to show you something special. Yes, if I'm putting that beside immediately under Nigeria. Okay, immediately under Nigeria, yeah, yes, assuming the report sheet is here and I'm pasting it here. Okay, now if I paste it in here, do you notice that the name here is automatically referenced? It's changing the name here that is being referenced, it's automatically changing here. That is the beauty of Microsoft Excel online. All right, let me change the student ID. You see that as I change the name, the name also change here. Let me try to change this grade five to maybe grade six. I have told you, you can see, welcome Noah, full star of grade six. So let's go back to our grade five. That is the intelligence. All right. Okay. At this point, is there any question? Uh, let me see if there are oh, 19 question attendance, please. Okay, please, are we to seek the five or six on the attendance? All right, good evening, everyone. Okay, please check the reference of what you are looking for. I guess that is where the issue is. You forgot to change the reference of the what we are working on. Okay, should we change the efforts as well? Okay, all right, thank you, thank you so much. Okay, I think the link to the, atten the attendance should be the six. All right. Okay. Thank you so much. Somebody is raising and Mr. Charles. Okay, Z, please type your question in the chat. Thank you, sir. All right. The data protection part is not clear. Yes. Does Exit has all these features? Yes, starting from Exit 2016 and above, we can get all these features, but this one is Excel online. It's more intelligent, but at the same time, it's kind of restricted to some. There are, you can't use the normal keyboard shortcut that we used to use, so we have to think about it, how to use it. So I'm sorry for using the Excel online this afternoon. Something came up, but sir, you can use 2016 upwards. Don't try 2013 or 2010, but 2016 is okay. All right. Okay, six week six. All right, thank you so much, sir. Great. Okay, now I want to show you something here. You know that we've not touched our brush it at all. We've only been talking about the bar data, but by now you understand what I mean. Okay, our brush it now, that is where we are going to get the info for all this, our, um, these are our reports. Okay, now we know that our brush sheets also have students 
ID. It has student ID colon that aligns with the bar data. If I include any student here, underneath here, it will be included also on the brush sheet, including their names. Okay, fine. Now I have English column. I have this. Now, how am I going to populate my report sheets? Knowing, of, knowing that there is a problem, there is a potential problem in the sense that some of our students, we know that English and Math, Biology, are Greek, and Yoruba or Igbo, compulsory subjects. But what if the student is a science student, commercial or arts, whereby I will have physics here, I will not have blank, zero, 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 a Greek. So that is where the subject code comes in. In our various schools, we used to have physics slash government slash commerce or physics government slash accounts. Now that combination of physics government slash accounts will be one subject like this. Let me try to edit this. This will be physics slash gov e r n m e n t slash as slash accounts like that okay as me i have that and i want to make it of course we have to write phy slash gov to slash ACT for space now this all subjects now we, we do want to carry this course code 9707 so that if i issue this report to a student i know that me as, as a student and the last chat, I know that okay, I'm going to um I'm an account student. So my portion of this is the account parts. Do you get it? So it will be having the same subject code. This is the problem that that is solving for us. So that we are not going to be having blanks in our reports card, like blank space, physics, blank, government score, this blank, like that. Okay. So that is what that has solved for us. Now, how are we going to know the score for physics? Let's say I have physics, 40, 50, 90, exceptional, A star. Okay. Now, going to the brush sheets, what I'm going to do is that I'm still going to look at the lookup function up here, formula bar. Formula bar now equals to V look or don't like, don't mind the arrangement it's because it's the Excel, the online version, it's looking nice on my, on the normal version, on the desktop version. All right, I have VLOOKUP. Now, I want to look at the physics or government or account score, depending on if she is a commercial or a student or science student, okay, then whatever, the course code is 9707. Okay, VLOOKUP for this person with ID 192347. Yes, with whatever I have in E4, comma, now space. Now, the table in this case now is the brush sheets. Yeah, starting from the beginning, again, moving down. Yes, I may not include the heading. We didn't need the heading. We don't need the heading. Now, this, I capture this, then. I choose the entire table. You must have recorded everything on the brush sheets from your school. So it's, you are, will be recording on the brush sheets. Yes. I choose everything here. Then, comma. Then, I know that we are looking at physics. Now, my physics CA is, this is my physics column here. That should be cell from the beginning, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, thirteen, twelve. So twelve from the beginning. And what we have there is twenty-six. Let's see. Then I choose that twenty-six, comma, and zero for an exact match, not approximate match. We are expecting twenty-six there. And hopefully, when I got there, there is a ref error. So what is going on? Okay, brush it, edit. Okay, yes, I know what is going on. What's going on is that I'm not, this brush it, edit, I'm supposed to include the index, the number, not, uh, not referencing it. I'm not referencing what is there. So let me check my physics column again from the beginning. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yes. 
twelve. 27 abi yes let's count again together 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 that's 27 right now we are expecting 27 okay that is number 12 yes so now this part of the vlookup function is supposed to be 12 that is column 12 on that table now if i include this hopefully we're expecting 27 yes but we have 36 so what is going on is that a random number generator somewhere so that i'm going to explain the reason behind that yes there is a random number generator you can see that the figures are changing okay look at this column look at the first column you can look at formula bar random between 25 and 40 is because so the the figures are changing that is the reason all right but we are right no problem that's why the figures are changing. Okay. Brush it. And we are fine. That's column 12. So let us query the examination for physics and see what will happen. One, two, from the beginning, one, two, assuming I've chosen everything. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, that should be number 13. But is there a question? The data protection part is not clear. Attendance, can we get a copy of the worked example? All right, that is must be for me to generate subject code. Please, uh, can you share the Excel work later? All right, all right, no problem. So attendance link, okay. We are going to share it on the group immediately after the call. Okay, but now this is our physics i said this is column 13 or so okay now let's go to the same reports we know that if this is number 12 this the next one should be what of course the one beside it should be number 13. yes we can see that it has changed again because of the random number generator control a control v and i'm going to change this to what to 13 and i think hopefully it works we have 37 don't mind this i didn't i only type this in i didn't use the formula that's why you're having 90 you can always use the formula in your case okay now 37 and that is that it has changed to 37 all right uh, okay and i have been viewing this Sam Smith. Let's go to the ID for Sam Smith is 192392. Okay. Now, if I change to 192392, Sam Smith, let's see the physics score. We can see that we have 3239. Let's check, brush it, and thank God we have 3239. 3239 for Sam Smith. Look at this upper column. Okay, now we can see that now our VLOOKUP function is very, very powerful. Now we've learned many things. Our VLOOKUP function is very, very powerful. What I did for this physics now, you can also do it for the other subject and have this template. So I'm going to leave you to do something like this and you are going to populate that for as many subjects as possible. But what you are going to do is that to make it work, the way I did this physics slash government slash accounts, that should be chemistry um, CRS, yes, at chemistry CRS and commerce. Yes, there are three. And the third one for science, that is geography for science. And I don't know, there are way we combine subjects, three subjects like that, so that each combination will now have a unique code. As a science student, I know that my physics code is 9709. As an art student, I know that my government code is, sorry, 9707. As a commercial student, I know that my account code is 9707, so that we are not going to have gap in our report sheet. And this report here can accommodate maximum of 11 subjects. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, ten. We know that we are nine subjects in most schools, but we are giving one extra. We can give extra to if you if you are doing for the mathematics and you're also doing technical drawing. Those are the subjects that stand alone. But those ones that are combined, we have this 
extra code like unique code you know the way to combine it in your various schools you can also include many information here maybe parent name parent number since and you are going to really look up it from the bio data so that by the time you have that templates whatever what the only thing you need to do is to be populating this once you have new students in your class then these templates this one here will be populating itself with their pictures then you'll be uploading their pictures now uh, somebody will ask me that are ah, the pictures are not changing yes you can also do the same thing you can also reference picture this bar data here for each maybe from the second column if you insert a new column we are going to insert their picture into a new cell we are online so it will not really work well I will have demonstrated it, but we can do that on the WhatsApp group. So you can also reference pictures too, and it's going to work on the normal desktop. Then we've explained how I how we plot this donut chart in the previous classes. Then if you notice that because of time, if you notice that there are some tables here. These are called meta tables. We don't really need it, but it's just for us to count our, yes. This is my psychomoto, and I don't know the names. You, you will understand. Games, punctuality, I have this table here, then I give them scores from one to five, being five being the most proficient and one being the least proficient. Then using this, I plot a bar chart. So my, my school branding, the branding for my school is, purple or pink that's why so that's is that one that generates this so instead of giving instead of showing this to the parents no we show a chart i can also shrink the charts because of space maybe you have more just pull it in and show just make sure that the, the the labels are showing you can also increase the font size here and decrease the font size i don't know the what is the name what do you call that um Danny, maybe you call it in I don't know skills or something. So let's say we call it skills S K I L L S. Okay, yes, okay. But well, I don't know why it's okay, it's changing, right? Okay, that's that about that. Then your number of days present, number of days absent. A number of times school open now number of times school open minus number of days present should give you the number of days absent so this can also be dynamic you get it so we can also have a table somewhere that you record your of course that's what you are going to do besides the brush sheets you are going to have a column number of days present you already know that your number of times school open is Constants, it's not changing. Number of days present will be a column here. Then you use VLOOKUP to query it for each student's ID so that by the time you you change your students, everything will change. The picture will change, the name will change, everything about the student will change, including the number of times present and number of times school open. Everything will also change. You get okay. I have not copied this. Assuming I also copy this. To so my, I didn't copy the charts. Assume I also copy this to what we have already. Let's say I put it here. Okay, spacing, and you can also include this one. You can also include this one here. And you have your percentage attendance. That is number of days present divided by number of days could open multiply by 100, then that's going to give you your percentage attendance in percents. If you don't want to include the percent symbol, then inside in the feed, you already include the units, units in feed that this should be in percentage. Then in that case, I can choose to remove the percentage like that. Okay, but the reason why it is including it is because the online version already see that I am, it is intelligent to find the percentage symbol there and already formatted that as a percentage column. Okay.
That's the reason for that. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So at this point, is there a question? Oh, the time is 5.58. Okay, Mr. Aliva Wolf is raising yeah, and please. Thank, thank you so much, Mr. Muiwa. Thank you so much for this wonderful session. Please confirm you can hear me. Yes, sir, we can hear you. Thank you so much for taking us through on this. Yes, so our time is fast spent. Uh, this is 5.58. And um, yeah, so I'll just go through the chat to see if we have any question. Um, like we usually say, the conversation continues on the WhatsApp group. The group is always open for questions. Um, Mr. Muiwa is on all the theory channels that we have for um, on the WhatsApp group. So we're also going to be dropping the link to the WhatsApp group. So if you are not on the group yet, you can quickly join the WhatsApp group. So um, I will be going through the chat now to see um, if we have any question we can quickly pick up uh, um, in the next two or three minutes. So um, going through the chat now. So Abib is asking, can we get a copy of the work examples to guide us through creating hash from reception? Um, so Abib is asking if they can get a copy of this. Um, is yes, this something uh, you can share, Mr. I can share it. Perfect, perfect. So um Abib, I hope you are still on the course. So Mr. Miwa will be sharing this, and um, I think we'll be dropping it on our group chat. Um, so Lola did that means it's a must for me to okay. Please, sir, can you share the Excel work? For, okay, yes. Yeah, so that's still the same question. Okay, so Abdul Fatah is asking, can we get the recorded lessons for week four, five, and six for practice? Yes, Abdul Fatah, all the recordings are available on the DSN YouTube channel. And we also have the uh, mm -hmm. Facebook links that we're going to be sharing on the group. So this particular session, I mean, even all the sessions are actually live streamed such that we can have different... Uh, channels, different platform to always fall back on the recording. So this this session is also recorded, going to be made available on our DSN YouTube channel. And what once it is ready on our DSN YouTube channel, we're going to be communicating to everybody via mail and also on the WhatsApp group to let you know that all the recordings are now available. So Chidima is asking, um, I have a question, please. I did there are any way we can force the generated random numbers to remain steady without changing every time? Uh, Mr. Miwa, I don't know if this is something you would yes. like to respond to. Okay. I've answered in the chat. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Thank you so much. Um, So Rakia is saying we still need the worksheet. Yes, so we're going to be sharing the worksheet. And um, okay, okay. Um, can we use pivot table with the broadsheet? So this is a question from Wellington, Mr. Muiwa. Yes, I've answered too. Awesome, awesome, awesome. The WhatsApp group is locked. Um, Bill, I'm not sure of what you are saying. The WhatsApp group is actually old. okay. Yeah, probably it is locked for um conversations for now. Yeah, so I think I understand what you are saying now. So it's going to be opened. Going to be opened. We have our hours of engagement so that people will not. Um, spam the group. That's the reason why the group is always blocked sometimes. So we're going to be opening the group for conversations again. Uh, so should I be saying thank you so much, Mr. Amui? We have value added, and that is it. I told you when we started this class that it's going to be another awesome session, just like we've been having from week one to week two, week three, week four, week five. This is another awesome delivery from Mr. Amui, and I think it deserves um, our favorite emoji, it deserves our thank you in the chat. If you enjoyed today's session, let me see your thank you, Mr. Muiwa, in the chat. Let me see your favorite emotions. Let me see your favorite emojis in the chat. Thank you so much, Mr. Muiwa. So as regards the project, a detailed information on this will be shared with everyone via mail and also on the WhatsApp group uh, because uh, for you to get a certificate of completion, um, you need to have marked an attendance. You need to have gotten a particular percentage for the attendance. And um, you need to also participate in the project because this is going to be um, what you are going to, oh, you, you've actually learned something and you can lay your hands on project. So we're going to be communicating this in detail, uh, the project participation for this particular group 
um fellow educators it has been an awesome time with you um like i said it's it's been a learning experience it's been a learning journey from week one to week two week three and um even in the chat i can see some people here that i know myself that has been joining the session from day one it's been a fantastic one thank you so much everyone for joining us um this evening again for this wonderful session and thank you so much mr Muiwa. Uh, for always teaching us like a five-year-old. Yeah, yeah, for always teaching us like a five-year-old. Thank you so much, everyone. The conversation continues on the WhatsApp group. The conversation continues. And um, it's also important for you to share your learning experience. I mean, um, you've learned something for six weeks. It's important that you let people know what you've learned because this is how people can also learn. When you share your learning experience, others can get to know uh, what you've learned and they can also tap in yeah so go online go on your social media channels uh we're going to be dropping a detailed um details about people you can also tag while you are making your post we're going to be sharing that on the whatsapp group so that you can let people know that oh you've actually uh been a part of a wonderful training on a six week data analysis for educators now you can um, you, you can do a lot. You can you, you can visualize, you can use your pivot, you can create reports, you can perform wonderful things with Excel. Yes, it's very important that people know that you can actually do all those things. It's very important. And um, at DSN, we are going to be trying as much as possible um, to give your post visibility. By the time you tag DSN to your post, we retweet, we like it so that um, it, it gives your post a wider view. Thank you so much, everyone. Do enjoy the rest of your evening. Um, see you all on the WhatsApp group. Bye bye for now. All right. You will have a bye. You will have my post. Let me do it this way.